Welcome to Moonshot Radio with your host, Dr. Nivia Torres. Greetings and welcome to Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn. I'm your host, Nivia Torres, Executive Director of the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, also known as KRC. Our vision is that all children in Indian River County will be ready for kindergarten. We proudly partner with the Moonshot Moment, who is transforming the next generation in Indian River County by having 90% of all students reading on grade level by the third grade. With me today here in the studio, I have a powerful team. I have Shannon Maitland, who is the Community Engagement Manager from KRC. <laughs> I have Maria Pantoja, who is the Family Engagement Specialist for KRC. And I have Susan Roberts, who is the Early Education Coach at Child Care Resources of Indian River and who also collaborates with KRC. Ladies, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Very excited to have this conversation. And today we're going to talk about Felsmere. I want to start with Shannon. Shannon, I want to ask you, why is KRC working so closely in Felsmere around family engagement? Why Felsmere and what is the focus of this initiative? Felsmere is a wonderful local community. They've got a very strong network of partners through FACT, which is the Felsmere Action Community Team. Um, there's also a lot of families there with young ones who need a little bit of extra help. According to the United Way Alice Report, which is asset, asset constrained, no, Asset limited, limited, income constrained, and employed. So these are working families who just aren't making quite enough money mm. um, to, to provide for their basic needs. So about 80% of families in Felsmere are working, but they're just, you know, it's struggling to get food on the table and those basic necessities. Um, additionally, we've got three-fourths of the families who speak a language other than English in the home. So there are language barriers when you're working with schools and some of those basic things that kiddos need. So we chose Felsmere as a starting place, um, also because in Indian River County, we have about half the kids coming in ready for kindergarten. However, in Felsmere, only one third of those kids are ready. So we thought this was an ideal starting place with that fabric of partners and the high area of need. So definitely because of those demographics and that student achievement need, Felsmere seems like a prime location for this family engagement initiative. And Shannon, who provided the startup funding for this initiative and collaboration? We are very grateful to the Poses Foundation and the Emily Hall Tremaine Foundation for providing the startup. That is great. And we always are extremely grateful to funders when they support this experimentation taking place at the local level. Susan, let's talk a little bit about family engagement at this particular juncture. Why is it so important to work with families early on in order to make sure that we have success in school? There's so much research now that, set, that talks about brain development in the young child in those very early years from infant to about three, four years old. And um, I know that in Felsmere, a lot of our families, our uh, children are still in the homes with mom and dad. And it's really important that parents realize that um, they are their child's first teacher, not to put pressure on them, um, but they, have, they can make such a difference in their child's life by doing little things throughout the day, little types of interactions that really will support skills that that child's gonna need when they start into kindergarten, even as infants, talking, um, interacting with the child, spending time with your child and knowing that they're secure and that they're safe are all very important for little infants. And as they get older, talking about things in the home, um, when you go for a walk, talking about things that you see, um, having books to look at and talking with your child. All of those things are very important, and it really starts in the home. Uh, that's where um, education begins and is encouraged and will continue on. So as we've heard many times, Susan, literacy starts at birth and education starts Definitely. at home. And like you say, parents are the child's first and best teacher, so we really need to nurture and foster that. Definitely. Maria, I want to ask you now, 
Um, help me understand. I believe that you've grown up in Felsmere for most of your life. Is that correct? That is correct, Nivia. So you have a very unique understanding of the community. You know these families and you know their needs. Can you share with us a little bit about the struggles that families face on a day-to-day -day basis and some of the services that you try to connect them with? Well, some of the struggles that a lot of our families do have is um, knowing the English language, being able to communicate. Mm -hmm. So there are some programs out in Felsmere, like Literacy Service that I refer them to, uh, in your River State College, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, they offer these programs for our families for, so they can better themselves in English speaking and to be able to uh, conversate with uh, other people. Another barrier that they have is um, job, filling out job applications. Oh, yeah. So I do mm -hmm. assist with that because a lot of the job applications require them to get filled online. Mm. So that's one big struggle for our families. And another one is uh, transportation. A lot of our families do use the goal line. So they travel to doctor's appointments, um, jobs. Some of them use the goal line to get to work and um, uh, to go pick up groceries for their families in order to provide for them. So those are some of the struggles that I see with our families in Felsmere. And those are some basic fundamental needs that if we're not meeting those basic fundamental needs, we can get to what you were talking about, Susan, in terms of the literacy and mm -hmm. that focus, making sure that your little one is ready for kindergarten. And we need to address those needs first. Yes. Thank you for sharing that, Maria. Um, Shannon, talk to us a little bit about these sessions. How often do you meet with families and what does a typical session look like? Sure, we do sessions monthly, and it's a very welcoming environment. So we try to make it fun, and yes, they're learning, but we want them to have a, a good time and feel comfortable there. So as they walk in, I'm there with my registration checklist, and we make sure you know we've got everybody's name and know who's there. And then we have a lovely meal that's provided by a local food vendor. So everyone eats together, and we have a little time to talk, and families get to mingle and help build their support network. Um, and then afterwards, we do a little song, a little welcoming and announcement. Sometimes we have partners do a, a little bit of a presentation then. And afterwards, we have the young kids and the parents go into a classroom, either with Susan and Maria or other wonderful teachers. The big kids stay in the cafeteria where we have a supervised area where we're doing educational activities. So it's really wonderful because the parents and the children are sitting there together and doing that hands-on activity together without the distraction of the older kids. So they really get to focus their attention on the younger ones. And I love hearing what you said about really you create the sense of community early on, whether it's with a song, you're welcoming the families, and then there's that very targeted instruction depending on the age group that takes place. Exactly. We're trying hard. <laughs> Susan, talk to us a little bit about these lessons. What is the focus of the lessons that you provide? We try to focus on developmentally appropriate activities for the children because we know that skills are built up from what they learn very young until they're learning skills uh, to make them ready for school. Um, so we have two classes, one for infants through a toddler age, and then we also have a three year old class through uh, children who have not yet started kindergarten. So we can kind of focus on those two groups. Um, we have the parent, um, sometimes dads come too, which is really great, um, and the child together. Um, there are a lot of programs that will just talk with the parent, but I felt it's very important to have them together because that's what we want. We want those interactions between the parent and the child. Um, when developing lessons, we try to focus on things that the parent will have in their home mm -hmm. that they don't need to go out and buy special materials and, and spend a lot of money doing mm -hmm. things. So we do use um, materials that we have um, readily in the home. Um, actually, I brought something in today just show to show. Show us, Susan. <laughs> These are little things that I do. Okay. Um, but with the older group, when we're starting to talk about numbers, this is just a, a cap off of an orange juice container. Oh. I have a bowl on my counter, and these things go in there. Okay. And we put dots on here so the child can start counting the dots. And then we can start 
equating that with the numeral oh. because there's a difference between knowing how to count things and then knowing the symbol for those things. And also the parent can use this to put maybe beans or something so they could put three beans inside. So this little cap can be used for a number of different pre-math skills so that they can start building on um, skills in school. We have covered um, number skills. We always cover literacy, literacy skills in every session. We read a book, we sing songs, we do rhymes. And we also do everything in both English and Spanish. Maria is my partner in our mm-hmm. class. And, and we, we go back and forth and just have a great time with the parents. We're usually laughing a lot during our sessions. Um, and we have covered some science skills. We've gone into some health issues. One of the books that we provided um, parents is about germs are not for sharing because we know that the flu season is coming up. Mm -hmm. And so it's important uh, that parents go over this with their children. And we taught parents and children how to sneeze into their elbow, which is something that as a young child, most of us are taught to sneeze into our hands. That's not the way it is anymore. Um, So we try and this, the books that we give out, we try to do it in both languages. So we cover all different types of skills, including social emotional skills. We talk about children's feelings and looking at people's faces and trying to um, understand how they feel about something, if they're upset, if they're angry, if they're happy. Um, And so we cover a wide range. When we use materials, we try to get as much as we can out of the materials and let it be something that parents can do within their regular day. This isn't something extra, Mm-mm. and there is this is not something that's going to be expensive. It's just something else you can do with the time that you're spending with your child. You capitalize on the time, and you also let them know that these are things that you have readily available. Certainly. Like Certainly. that orange juice cap, and <laughs> I, I just think that's a great idea, Susan. I'm always excited to see just the novel ideas that you have. You don't need to invest a lot. Correct. The things that you have within the home where you can teach your little one basic literacy and numeracy skills. Definitely. They know me very well at the local dollar stores. <laughs> um, and because almost everything we use is a, a dollar or less. Well, well, we like to hear that for a bargain You can, again, focus on literacy and numeracy skills with your little one. Definitely. We're going to take a quick break to hear from our sponsors, but we will be right back. At the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, our vision is for every parent, regardless of income or zip code, to have the knowledge and tools they need to raise healthy children that are prepared for kindergarten. Our mission is to support our partners in developing a high-quality early childhood system that is family-centered. Our outreach and parent engagement specialists connect with families and build trusted relationships. KRC has chosen Felsmere and Gifford as our two focus areas in Indian River County. Our Felsmere office is located downtown in the city annex, and our new Gifford office is located within Victory Park Apartments. Our administrative offices are now located adjacent to Healthy Start and Treasure Coast Community Health in Vero Beach. Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, developing a high-quality early childhood system for all children in Indian River County. Happy Holidays from your friends at 14 Bones. We want to remind you that during this busy season, we are here for you and ready to serve. Whether it's a delicious quality meal on the run to keep you on the move or an officer holiday home party, We've got you covered, from barbecue buffets to cocktail parties with delectable creative past hors d'oeuvres. Don't forget to dine in with us and enjoy the finest baby back ribs around, or one of our daily specials, such as our famous Sunday chicken. If you're in the mood for some fun, keep in mind that Thursday nights are bluegrass and barbecue from 6 to 8. Looking for a gift idea? From December 10th through the 24th, Pick up a gift certificate with a bonus, buy $50 and get $10 for free. From all of your friends at 14 Bones Barbecue, we wish you a safe and happy holiday. Wilkie's 14 Bones, located on US1 in Vero Beach. Tis the holiday season and it's time to think green. Time to reuse and recycle, if you know what I mean. Recycle your wrapping paper, that's one way to start. It's easy with single stream, it just goes in the blue cart. Now how about those packing peanuts made out of styrofoam? They can be reused in your packaging and sent to another home. 
Bring them back to any pack mail or perhaps a UPS store and visit ircrecycles.com if you want to learn more. Happy holidays from the Solid Waste Disposal District of Indian River County. On behalf of all of the staff and the employees at the Vero Beach Regional Airport, this is Eric Menger, Airport Director, wishing everyone in the community a peaceful and prosperous holiday season and a happy new year. <laughs> Your profile says you play in the mud. When do you ever... When I shower in that disgusting well water. All Right's Eco Water Systems can make your well water clear, delicious, and safe. Try All Right Water free for 30 days. Call 569-5187. 569-5187. Christmas is a time to remember the ones who light our lives with friendship, laughter, and love. Thank you, and Merry Christmas, Vero Beach, from Dr. and Mrs. Alan Durkin, Dr. Terry Karstensen, and everyone at Ocean Drive Plastic Surgery. Christmas is Santa and elves and presents. But Christmas is also the birth of the baby Jesus. And that's what's important. We wish you a Merry Christmas from Planet Vero Radio. We're back to Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn. I'm your host, Nivia Torres, Executive Director of KRC. With me today in the studio, I have a powerful team, Shannon Maitland, Maria Pantoja, and Susan Roberts. And they are overseeing a family engagement initiative in Falsmere here in Indian River County. Shannon and Maria, I want to talk to you now about the partners that really support this initiative, because we understand that this is a complex issue. So tell me a little bit about who is supporting this initiative, Shannon. Sure. We have a wide variety of partners. Um, we have the school district and Felsmere Elementary who are loaning us this space. We've teamed up with our friends at 211 Help Me Grow to do ASQ developmental screenings with the kids. Our wonderful friends at Literacy Services um, help in so many different ways there. We're grateful for them. Our friends at TCCH are going to be doing dental screenings on all of the kids. Um, Maria, we've got some local businesses involved. Right? We do. We have a buggy bunch that comes from Vero Beach to offer play classes for our families and the diaper closet. Mm, that's important. We also have um, the Kids Closet Charities that uh, connect with our families. They offer from winter clothes to um, lots of educational toys and lots and lots of books that they provide for our families. We also connect with um, the Love of Paws mm. and uh, the Food Bank. That I volunteer at the Food Bank once a month, and they offer f delicious, wonderful food for our families. Mm. And um, some of our other partnering agencies are Women's Care Net. And did you mention TCCH? You did. Yeah. Treasure Coast. And Treasure Coast Community Health yes. also partners with yep. our with us KRC. And the Learning Alliance came in for one of our recent classes to do the Voices Project. Um, the Moonshot Moment, of course, because we're mm -hmm. part of that big initiative. And our funders, we've got United Way, we've got PNC, we've got the Poses Foundation, the Tremaine Foundation. I'm sure there are a few others that we're forgetting our partners at FACT. So we're really trying to create this forum for family engagement where it's not just KRC doing this, but we're providing this space where partners can come in and provide resources and information to families. And we're, through Maria's wonderful efforts, we're helping to recruit the families to come to this event so that everybody can learn and everybody can participate. I like to say that we're building bridges. So we've got the families who need services and we've got the services. And I feel like KRC helps build that bridge to connect everyone together and connect partners together. Correct. And we're really, we also want to point out that in this initiative, we are co-creating this with the community. We're just not going in Felsmere, although Maria is well-respected and trusted and is really a critical link with the community. But we're really taking the time to listen from the community. What is it that they need so that they can really support mm -hmm. this initiative as well. But I love what I heard in terms of the partnerships, because how many partners would you say are part of this initiative then, Shannon, if we're thinking about outcomes? We've got over 19 partners involved, which I think is fantastic to really show that the community cares about families and that we want to help. So there's mm -hmm. a chart that I want um, us to bring up. And let's mm -hmm. transition now and talk a little bit about the outcomes, because it's important that we really focus on what are the results of this 
initiative and how many families have we fed? How many families have come to these uh, parent trainings? So let's go over the numbers, Shannon. Sure. We have 43 different families who have attended our classes. Some of them come every time. Mm -hmm. Some of them have been to one or more sessions. Um, That includes 58 different kiddos, um, ages birth through five, who have been involved with the project. We have 377 hot meals that we've provided for families. Um, We've given out over 144 books during the classes. And um, a lot of these families are, the majority of them are in the low or very low income bracket. Um, So I feel like it's very important that we acknowledge that. And like Susan said, we're using materials that are accessible to them um, at any income range. Well, those are those are excellent outcomes. So let's talk a little bit now, Susan, about the home libraries, because I know that book distribution and access to literacy is an integral part of this initiative. How many books would you say families have received? How often do they receive these books? They receive a book um, almost at every one of our sessions. And when we read a book during the session, we always read the books that uh, we provide. Um, As I said before, we try to do them both English and Spanish books um, because I feel that benefits everybody in the family, even parents who might not be able to read the English might be able to read the Spanish. That's helpful also. Um, So those books are used um, and given to them to take home because that way we can build on some of these books that we've given. Uh, We've given books such as A Very Hungry Caterpillar, Mm. and this is in English and Spanish. And um, you can do science, you can do math, you can do um, different colors, and you're doing literacy, of course, with these materials. So we try to get as many books as we can into the home um, for the children and, uh, if we can, for the parents also. Excellent. And the books, like you said, are in English. They're in Spanish. We want to make sure that they're readily available Mm -hmm. to them. And they get one at every session. Sure. And the lessons are critically focused on the book as well. Yes. Um, So what is the next session? When do parents meet again? Monday, January 14th. We'll be back at Felsmere Elementary in the evening. And in the evening, so when does the community meal start? Around what time? 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. So, mm-hmm. and if anyone is interested in supporting this initiative, can they contact Maria in Felsmere? Who can they contact, Shannon? Sure. If someone's in Felsmere, they're welcome to contact Maria. They can also call our administrative office, check out our website, www.krcirc.org. We have information on our Facebook page. If anyone wanted to volunteer or provide any sort of supplies, um, their time, their talents, we also accept food donations. Um, And we also accept sponsors. We have a wide variety of ways to get involved. And we can also just let families know. If you know a family in Felsmere, you can let them know about the class so that they can get enrolled. And it's free to families, which I feel like is very important to mention. Everything is free. The food is free. The books that they receive, Susan, everything Mm -hmm. is free. I want to thank all of you for the stellar work that you're doing in Felsmere. Shannon Maitland, Maria Pantojas and Susan Roberts. You do a fabulous job. Thank you for your commitment to the community. We certainly encourage those people who are listening to us to contribute as well and to support this initiative. Like Susan said, parents are a child's first teacher. We need to support that. So thank you, ladies, for joining me today. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank Thank you for having us. And until next time, this has been Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn.